Welcome to another episode of Two Dudes and a Cage. Today we got a fighter spotlight episode for you featuring Joe Nichols. Joe is a world-class striking athlete. He teaches at Wanderlei Jiu-Jitsu in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and he has coached athletes at the highest level in promotions like the UFC, Bellator, 1FC, LFA, PFL, and many more. Chances are he's coached someone that you have watched fight before. Joe has been training since 1989. He's a first degree Taekwondo black belt. He's a black belt under Duke Rufus. He has over 40 fights. He's trained with Kong Napa and Lurzilla, who are respectively three and four time champions at Ramadan Stadium in Thailand. Joe has oh. also fought and trained in Thailand himself. Uh, welcome, Joe. Thank you so much for being here. We're so excited to have you today. Yeah, it's nice to be here. I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy. I, I, I'm lucky. Uh, I met so many legendary fighters. I think the first fighter I met that was famous was Sugar Ray Leonard. Wow. Uh, I, walked, I walked into a, a champion gym at 16 and Sugar Ray Leonard is in there. And at the time, I I knew about him, but like I just was looking. I'm like, shit, that's Sugar Ray Leonard. Right. I'm like, I guess I'm, I'm like in the right place, man. So I, I got lucky um, to meet all those guys. You know, I met countless uh Nano, who's a champion of one FC, I, I got to to meet him and and he trained, watch him train a little bit. Uh, when I, I coached, I think 2018, uh, the it's the equivalent of the Olympics. Gamma is global mixed martial arts, and uh, there's 25 countries they competed in Singapore. And the girl I brought and trained, Laura Sanchez, she won the gold medal at 155 in the women's. Uh, she beat everybody in under a minute. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, and I trained her from no experience all the way up to, to that. And now she's in the PFL, I think. She uh, she moved to Vegas, though, so I, I kind of lost track with her a little bit. Hey, it happens. Fighters move a lot. And, and yeah, yeah, like, for sure. Especially when they get to the higher levels. Yeah. yeah. Well, they don't have to. They can come here. <laughs> hey, yeah, they yeah, should. They guys. should stay. I, I, I agree with you. Let's, let's, uh, hopefully we can build that atmosphere. I think you guys well, got a good thing going. Oh, yeah. the gym so you definitely definitely will retain fighters there for sure oh yeah we have two ufc fighters right now training and then we have one in bellator so nice that's pretty nice. good yeah. yeah yeah that's amazing so man do you want to start by just telling us a little bit about yourself um you know maybe uh your background and, and things like that yeah um well i started taekwondo i think about 89 i was like 10 uh, I'm pretty old. I'm 43 right now, so uh, I'm gonna be 44 in September. Nice, uh, man. I just I, the key to this. A lot of people ask me, like, man, you're older. You know, you look good. And I'm like, well, parts genetics. Every my cousin, uh, Shauna Nichols, she was a uh, All American point guard for the Badgers, and she played basketball uh, in Holland as a professional. And now she's the Bucks DJ, so she DJs for the Bucks. Cool. He's a real good athlete. Most of my family are are athletes, um, and they're in real good shape. But I I don't stop training. Like today, I lifted weights. Yesterday, I rode my my BMX bike. I, then I played basketball. Um, you it's know, a so I'm always like, I'm always doing yeah, and I don't come off my diet. Like I'm always on a clean diet. I don't eat bad food. Uh, I don't really. I only drink water and I drink a little bit of, I'll have a little coffee and that's about it. But right. other than that, I'm real, real strict with that, man. It's very important. The, the diet thing is huge. I see a lot of fighters, they, they come off their, they get out of their fight camp and they blow up, you know, they gain like 50 pounds and then they got to cut all this weight and lose all this weight. And that's really bad for you. Like, like Patty Pimblett. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's not healthy for you in the long run. You know, when you get older and you retire, you just, you get huge, you know, and, it's very difficult to keep that off, you know? So I try to stay committed to and disciplined to my diet. You know, it's very, very important. It definitely shows. I mean, you look shredded in all the pictures I yeah. see. So yeah. It, it, yeah. Yeah. And I know like if I don't eat right, um, you kind of feel it in training. You're like, Oh, what did I, I didn't eat yesterday. That's why I don't have any energy, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. You got to eat, man. Well, in, in Thailand, what they do, 
you run 10 kilometers, it's about six miles. Then, and then you train for what, what I did for this last fight when I got to Thailand and I did it here too. I would run, then I'd hit tie pads. I'd do like five to seven rounds. Uh, then I'd spar with someone for five rounds and then I'd do like bag work and stuff all the time. And then I'd do it again at night. But in Thailand, when I, I went to Phuket top team, it's a very good gym. So uh, it's called Thai Soy and Tiger Muay Thai is on one end of the street. And then on the other end, about a mile down or half a mile is Phuket top team. And then in between that is all gyms, little tiny, you know, dragon Muay Thai, other little Muay Thai gyms, hotels. 7-Elevens, pharmacies, and everything is a revolved around like health and fitness. So they have like hot yoga, they have massage places, cool. they have these protein smoothie bars everywhere. So like the little stand, you can be like, I want BCAs in here, I want protein, coconut water, bananas, dragon fruit, whatever you whatever you want. They'll, if they have it, they'll throw it in there. It's like two dollars. You know, I bet it's all like fresh and super Every, good too. I can pick it off the tree, and I mean the mangoes there are way different than the ones here. It's oh. it's insane. So like I lost tons of weight training there because they they'd have me run the 10k, then I'd hit pads for like seven rounds, do bag work, then we'd spar five rounds, then we'd clinch for 20 minutes, then we do 200 swing knees, 100 speed kicks. And then 200 crunches, you know, or tie crunches. Yeah. And they hit you in the stomach afterwards. Yeah, they do that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So it was good, man. I I got to work with this kid. Uh, he was Thai. Um, he had over 200 fights. He didn't speak English at all. Wow. And they made me clinch and spar him all the time. And, and he was really good, man. I had a hard time with him. But it was fun. They're always laughing, too. They don't spar hard. Like, here – these guys spar like way too hard, man. And they're right. like, oh, spar and you can't spar. But if you spar with control, you can spar every day. Just don't try to kill each other. More the thing is, you hit, you hit the pads hard, you hit the bag hard. You don't hit each other hard. If you, you break your partners, you're not going to have any training partners. You know, it's, okay. it's not a smart thing. You know, so, I got a question about sparring. Like sure. You said, you know, a lot of people go in and I don't know if it's like a dominance thing. Like I want to try to knock their head off. Would you, you say if you spar at like 30%, you could learn more and get more out of it than trying to spar oh, at yeah, 75%? Definitely. I spar every day. I mean, we don't go super light, but you still got to throw your kicks. The, the thing is you got to place your kicks and you can't like just throw a wild kick out there. You'll hurt yourself. Um, and you, you won't score and they'll hit you. So like, you got to make sure you, you throw your kicks with um, commitment, but you don't have to blast them either, but you can kick the arms and the body and the legs a little harder, you know, but again, you fight with no shin pads on. So because you got shin pads on, doesn't mean you blast blocks. Cause if you blast somebody's block in a fight, you're going to, you might break your leg, you know? So you have to learn to control your kicks. You got to learn to control your strikes because, you know, it's bones. You're hitting bones on bones. So, I mean, I, I, again, I spar almost every day, and I'm fine. You know, I just fought. It's like a little over two weeks ago. I don't have any injuries. And you're, already, you're already sparring again. No, I, I, I had to rest because my shin was sore. Okay. Because, I, I mean, I, he, he checked my, my kick a couple times, and I, I kicked him and stuff. But it, it's actually better now. I mean, I kicked the bag hard. So that's how my shin gets conditioned. Nice. And, you know, for three decades, I've been doing it. So my, my legs are pretty tough. Um, and I, I'm, I know, like, if I see him, he's going to block or something, I pull it a little bit. I don't blast it. You know, if you right. try to kick through a block, you're going to break your leg. It's just that simple. Yeah. Shin to shin, to shin contact hurts. It, yeah, it can. <laughs> <laughs> so in Thailand, well, not in Thailand, but sometimes there's videos of, like, Muay Thai in Thailand kicking trees. Is that something that they always do, or is that no? That's a, that, that's something they do for show, and they're kicking okay. down banana trees. You can put. My wife is from Puerto Rico, and she saw that, and she's like, "Dude, you can push those trees down with your hands." Like, I mean, it probably hurt like a regular person, but they're not that hard, you know. I mean, they're kind of hard, but you see them kicking them apart, and they might have did that in ancient times, but what they do now, they just they kick hard bags, they kick the pads hard, and. They fight like every two weeks since they start because if you're a child there, 
the your family pretty much sells you to the gym. You live at the gym. You go to school at the gym. You eat there. You sleep there. So like they grow up and they do it, you know. And they don't they spar. They don't wear shin pads a lot of times. If they don't, if they have money, they might. So they just they get good control with uh, everything because everything's about balance. If you get swept or knocked off balance, you can lose the round. So you got to be very careful with that. That's awesome, dude. It's it's crazy. Yeah, I, I want to hear so much about Thailand. That's that's really cool, man. Yeah, I've been there three times. Um, in '98, I had four coaches from Thailand: Kong Napa, Kampun, Sunkla, who actually beat Buakot twice in Thailand. Wow! And uh, Hajai, who was from there. They're actually from Sunkla, Thailand, and Hajai is a city there. They just named themselves after the city. <laughs> So, man, you're you're from Wisconsin, so am I. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, what what does it mean to be able to re rep Wisconsin on the world stage? I mean, you've been all over the world. You've been in all the major promotions. Uh, you know, Wisconsin usually doesn't get the credit. And what what does that mean for you to be able to uh, you know, say say Wisconsin's on the map and and uh, these are the type of people we produce here in Wisconsin. Oh, I mean, there's there's a lot of fighters from Wisconsin who've been yeah. doing well. Gerald McCullen, uh in the 80s, 90s, he was a world champion, man. He I think he beat Mike Tyson's first round first uh first round knockout record. Sweet. You, you can look him up on YouTube, Gerald McCullen. He he actually got paralyzed in a fight. His last fight he got cool. physically paralyzed um but he would he would kill guys, man. Liver shots, he was really good. Um Cause uh, when I was 25, I started training at the the King Center on 15th and Philippe, in boxing, and I went down there and I just I'd spar and stuff, and they'd take me to boxing fights. I fought in. Oh no. Uh oh. You know. Um, oh, there we go. I got experience too. Nice, nice. You cut out for a minute, so we missed a little bit of what you said, but, but no worries. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, it's I'm okay. sorry. I'll turn my thing off. It's all good. It happened. Oh, you got a notification. That's what happened. <laughs> it's off now. No worries. Yeah, yeah. Nope. Yeah, it's all good. It's cool. Yeah. So, man, let, let's talk about your childhood. I don't know if you grew up in Milwaukee or not. Man, Milwaukee is is if you did Milwaukee, it, for those who don't know, it's pretty rough, man. It's a, it's a rough area. So, um, you know, there's a lot of crime there. Um, let's talk about your childhood and maybe how joining martial arts probably saved you from, uh, you know, going into the streets and a life of crime or, you know, anything like that. Oh, um, well, I grew up on the North side, pretty much Ooh. Northwest. Uh, I lived on Silver Spring and then Villard Center, uh, Burley. Um, Burley. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, my, my childhood was rough. I mean, I remember yeah. my mom, my mom got mugged carrying me home when I was four. So like I, she was carrying me and the dude mugged her and he stuck a knife in her back while Ooh. she was carrying me. Yeah. And, um, and I mean, I, I got robbed and jumped lots of times. I was, I was in jail a lot. Um, just my neighborhood was bad. So, I mean, we all carried guns. Uh, everybody had a gun since I was like 12. So <laughs> when I was like 15, I got caught with one and I got I went to jail for a year. Oh, when I got out, that's when I started Muay Thai. And um, I was like, I, I want to do something else. And nice. then I, I still kind of hung around the same people though. And I ended up going back when I was 17. I went to House of Corrections. Um, and then I was, yeah, I was in and out all the time. You know, and then 20, I had enough. I'm like, you know, most of my friends from from that that circle of friends, they they're all dead or in prison for yeah. stuff. Um, that that life kills you, or you go to prison for the rest of your life, or you're in and out. It just sucks. So, sure does. I'm real happy if I didn't have this because I'm kind of a wild person. This this gives me something to kind of let you know, kind of focus that energy on. You know, I got a lot of energy. Um. I'm always doing stuff, you know. I, I lifted weights today, and then I came here yesterday. I played basketball. I got BMX bike. I, I rode that yesterday, so nice. I'm I'm pretty active, you know. At, at 43, 
you can't stop moving, you know. And uh, there's a guy, Panda Banks, Steve Banks. He uh, he's from North Carolina. He lives in Thailand. I think he's been there ten years. He did bare knuckle boxing. Ooh. The, the Saturday before I got there, he was back in the gym Monday. He had a big cut on his forehead from the fight. And then he's like, man, you got to keep moving. You can't take breaks, you know. Like, these guys, they do a fight camp, right? And then they take months off. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you can't do that, especially in MMA. MMA, you have to be good at so many different things. Yeah. Jiu Jitsu, wrestling, boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai. Um, and everybody's only getting better. So, like, you can't take these long breaks in between. If you're hurt, then you kind of have to. But if you're pretty healthy and you feel good, you should go right back to the gym. That's how you're going to climb the ladder, especially in the UFC, man. The UFC is the toughest. That's the NFL of fighting. Right. I mean, they're the best people. They're all hungry. And I see so many fighters get signed to the UFC and they, they don't train like they did. I'm like, really? why aren't you training? That is your job. And then they get cut. And they're like, oh, I got cut. And I'm like, well, you didn't come in and train that much. You know, I know guys that they train like two, three days a week. And wow. they, they, were, they were great. Like, they would have been the champ. Yeah. I, I know I know one guy, he was the world champion. And he, he stopped training like he did. And then he'd lose all the time. He trained for, you know, he trained for his fight camp a little bit. And not like he should. And then he, he wouldn't win. And when he did train right, he won. And I'm like... You know, do the stuff you did to get there. Because the, the hard part about the getting to the UFC is not getting there. It, it's hard to stay there. Stay it's hard to there. climb the ladder. That's hard. It's hard to hold that belt, man. Everybody wants it. You don't see many guys hold it for more than, you know, two or three fights. Right. It doesn't happen. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But they get money and they get comfortable because if you look at MMA fighters, an MMA fighter with a lot of fights is like 20 fights. Oh, my God, I got 20 pro fights. Right. That's nothing compared to the, the ties or the boxers who have 100, 200 100. amateur fights or, or Muay Thai, they got two, 300 fights. You know, so it's like you got a few fights. You've been training five years or 10 or whatever. It, it, your, your skill level is not, not up, up to where you can do that. You know, Mayweather can do that. Because he started boxing when he was young. He's got over 100 amateur fights, you know, and then he's got the, the pro fights, you know. But I don't think you should do that in MMA. I think you should come back and at least, you know, put the gi on, learn jujitsu, right? you know, really right. learn the stuff, take the classes. Don't just do fighter training. You know, you need to do all that to, to build your um your fight IQ, you know. Keep learning. Oh, yeah, yeah. There, like you said, there's just so many aspects and so much to learn. And yeah, you got to always be taking in more, taking in more. You're right. Yeah. There's some guys at my gym that you just see at the fighter training, but they don't come to the earlier classes uh, where it's like instructions and things like that. Yeah. Well. So I, I mean, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, technique is everything. If you don't have the proper techniques, like you might be good and tough, but do you want to get beat up every fight? And, be all messed right. up and have to go to the hospital and then you got to take off it's like and most people that aren't in the ufc or the pfl or whatever they don't they have jobs you got to go to work yep. Yep. you know so you want to go to work all messed up like and then you got to tell know. everybody you you lost you know yeah or it's even if you the scars and you say you won you look yep. cool you know yeah but i mean i pride myself my fighters don't look that bad after their fights they don't they look some of them, I mean, they have a harder fight. They look a little bit beat up, but they're not they're not injured. Right. And they're right back in the gym, you know, because I, I teach them good defense. You know, it's all, you know, it's not just offense. I mean, you got to hit the guy, but you got to learn how to defend and, and protect yourself. Like, I fought two weeks ago, five rounds in Thailand against a 21-year-old. They didn't weigh us. He was 6'2", probably, a, I don't know how much he weighed. He must have been 170 at 6'2". I look big on the camera, but I'm only like 145. I'm 5'8". Oh, wow. I'm not that big, man. I look bigger. You do. I'm, yeah, I'm 5'8". I just weighed myself now. I'm, I'm still like 149, 150. Wow. And I'm trying to gain weight, but I don't eat bad. I could eat ice cream and pizza and crap, and I'd probably gain a lot of weight. But You're, it be you're lucky. Yeah. Well, I'm just – I'm disciplined. I don't, I don't eat bad, man. I just don't. I stopped – when I turned 40 – I, I I talked to a guy, John McDessie. He was in the UFC. I trained him 
uh, a lot. And he's like, man, I eat the same thing every day. And he doesn't go up and down in weight. And I'm like, you know what? That sounds good. You always look like you're in shape. You know, you never look fat, nothing. So I started kind of following that. And I started learning more about nutrition. And that makes a huge difference. I don't, you know, it makes a huge, huge difference, your nutrition. I will take note of that. <laughs> so so with, um, you're fighting in Thailand. I know, I'm assuming, you know, everyone watches UFC, Bellator, and the commentators always say, oh, a brown belt in Muay Thai. Now, I've never trained Muay Thai, but I know that they don't have belts. So could you explain, no. like, the significance of the armbands, which is actually what they have? Oh, those are, those are called projects. And then the Mong Kong, I had one made uh, by the, the uh, crew, uh, Red, dang, he, uh, he made it for me. And then they took me to the temple and they had the monks bless it. So cool. those are, those are like strictly like to protect you. It's, it's like, uh, they're very traditional in Thailand. They're, they're, most of them are strict Buddhist and they, you know, they light candles, they go give offerings and they, they get blessed before they fight. And, um, I think that protect me. I got these things there. If you can see them, these yep. are called sin sucks and the, uh, the monks put them on me, and when I this one uh you can take off, but these you cannot cut off. If you cut them off, it's really bad luck. They're supposed to either fall off or you can untie them. Awesome. The coach wrapped my hands with it on, so he wrapped over the 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 um, bracelet, and th over there they tape your hands, they tape your knuckles, everything. Really? And then they put a little bit of gauze on it. They take the the athletic tape. And they roll it up into three tubes and they put those on for the knuckle pad. But people usually don't break their hands. I mean, yeah. they wrap they up really good, you know. I mean, they do, but it, it's a little bit different. You know, here in America, they don't let you do that. Um, I don't know why, but they just don't let you. Yeah, you can't have tape over the knuckles. And yeah. it's a, it is a little bit different how, how they take. I've seen some bad hand wraps, too, before. Like, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. some coaches just don't take the time to properly wrap hands right. And then, Well, I mean, if you break your hand, you can't fight, man. And you can't. I mean, you could, but it's yeah. not a good idea. It's definitely important to, to yeah. protect yourself, man. That's, that's why the, the, the gloves are there, you know, not yeah. they protect your opponent, but they also protect your hands as well too. You know, it's something we yeah. discussed previously. Uh, um, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, um, your, your, your hands and your feet are just as store, uh, sore after a fight from striking as mm -hmm. like your body is from receiving strikes. So that's, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, you got to protect. Well, the MMA gloves, man, they're pretty unforgiving. Uh, almost a lot of guys I know broke their hand a few times. So you got to be careful how you punch. Uh, yeah. You can't, you got to punch a little different with the little gloves on. You can't punch the same as boxing gloves. Plus, in MMA, they, they put the little mask of Vaseline on. In boxing or Muay Thai, they put a paste on. It's like white and it's thick, it's not Vaseline. And they put it all over your face, your head. They rub it on your legs, your whole body, so you're slippery. So, like, you don't get cut. And it, it works pretty good. It's hard to catch the kick because they got it on the leg. So you got to, like, grab their foot. And it's, it's pretty difficult. You got to get a hold of the, the foot a little bit more than the, than the leg because they can suck it out really easy. Yeah. Uh, did you get rubbed down with tie oil before your fight? Yeah, yeah, they rub you down. Uh, they give you like a, 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 it's like a sports massage with Thai oil and Tiger Bomb. They do it all yeah. over you, so you're all hot and numb. It's 100 degrees there, so like your pores are open. So they, they're always, rub they give you a massage. So what they do is they train right up until the fight. They take off one day. And like the day before that, they'll come in, you'll get a, a massage with the Thai oil, the shadow box for like 15 minutes. And they'll be like, all right, go home, go to sleep, <laughs> and just rest, don't do nothing. And I'm like, all right. And then um, you, get rub, you get rubbed down, and um, they don't hit pads before they fight either over there. They yeah. just they shadow box a little bit. You do the Y crew, which is like the dance. I want to say it's like Muay Thai Kata or forms. 
what it does is it puts you in the right mindset. It shows respect and honor to your coaches and gym. And uh, it kind of stretches you too. So like you're kind of stretching if you watch it. They're stretching. They're doing a lot of the same blocks and movements you would do while you're fighting. So it kind of war- that kind of warms you up, you know. And you can shadow box a little bit, and uh, that's kind of your warm up for uh, the the Muay Thai fight in Thailand. They don't they don't hit pads though. They don't hit pads before they fight ever. That's cool. Yeah. So I I know you briefly touched on the Y crew, but do you want to yeah. kind of uh, uh, walk someone that has no idea is not familiar with Muay Thai. Do you want to walk them through what it is? You know, you bow to the north, you bow to the east, uh, you're paying respects. Um, uh, just kind of what you do when you do the dance, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, like you said, you, you bow to all four directions, uh, you seal the ring. So, you, they, you see the guy walk around with his hand on the rope, they're sealing the ring. What that is is to like ex- exercise the evil spirits out of the ring and the bad karma so no one gets hurt because. Well, honestly, when I fought, I would pray like I pray to God that I don't get hurt bad and my opponent doesn't get hurt bad. Sure. I don't I, I have to hurt him, but I don't want him to be injured where he's like messed up and he, he can't fight no more or he can't do anything. Like I want to win, but I don't want to like injure the guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's a martial artist mentality. You know, there's there's yeah. fighter mentality, but there's martial artists, you know, we don't necessarily want to go fight and hurt people we want to test our skills and see yeah. how good we are and, and that's what it's more about than trying to beat somebody up that is something that's super lost in mma there's people yeah. they talk crap to each other they're they're not the martial arts respect and aspect is gone like i was raised in taekwondo and traditional martial arts you had to stand at attention you had to ask to go get a drink of water you had to ask yeah. to come on the mat leave the mat to go to the bathroom you, you had to stand there and you would do exactly what the, the master would say. And in MMA, that, that's like gone. You it's know, lost, guys don't yeah. respect you. They argue with you. Drama, uh, drama sells. Yeah. What's that? Well, I mean, yeah, but at the gym and, you know, that the dojo and the, the, the academy, man, you right. got to be respectful of the coach and, you know, you should be on time. You should. Yes. You know, yes. Even being on time. Yeah, that's a big one. You know, you shouldn't just kind of come in, you know, and come in late. You got should at least be like, hey, can I come in class? You know, it's just it's just a, a thing that's really lost in MMA. It's yeah, just, I agree. You know, I, I like the more traditional approach, you know, bowing to get off and on the mat. Yeah. You know, calling I mean, my coach, sir, just things yeah. like that. People look at me funny when I say yes, sir, to him. But still, yeah. you know, it's I mean, that, yeah, I mean, I, I like Daniel uh, Wanderlei, the, I call him sir i'm like yes sir and he right. say something yeah. i do it yeah you know i pay attention i don't talk while he's instructing or he's showing a technique i'm, I'm watching you know i'm like i want to know how to do it <laughs> i'm not gonna know how to do it if i don't pay attention and i've been to a lot of countries they don't speak english really so i gotta really watch them you know especially in thailand their english isn't as good as ours most of some of the coaches so I, you gotta pay attention real good you know, yeah. you got to watch their feet. You got to watch how they move. There's a lot of little details. It's not just brute force. Like, I'm going to go at you as hard as I can, and I hope you fall down. Right. There's there's a lot of technique involved, you know. I mean, you take a guy like Sanchez just fought on uh, Saturday. He's 41. He's got, like, 400 fights, and he beat a guy. He, he knocked him out with a body knee, a liver knee in the second round. Oof. And it's all technique, you know, good technique. It wasn't him. He's tougher and stronger. He's actually smaller. He's 5'4", probably 154, uh, 68 kilograms. They do kilograms over there. And, um, you know, he, he, just, he has great technique. That's how he can fight at that age, you know. Uh, I, I got good defense, man, or was I probably would have got killed. <laughs> you know, uh, I just you got to have defense and, and technique. So, uh, earlier you said that, like, when you go in there, you know, you pray to God that you don't get hurt and your opponent doesn't get hurt. So, what do you think about, like, teep kicks? You know, they're becoming more common. Yeah. Trying to, like, hyperextend the knee. Uh, you, you shouldn't hyperextend your knee, I mean, if you're doing it right. When you do, like, a push kick or a teep, teep, teep in time means foot jab. That's, tech, that's exactly what it means. Uh, it's to, like – you know, keep the guy off you to back him up. So if you want to create distance and you want to keep him off you, they're good. You know, you just got to throw them the right way. 
it's easy to, uh, if you don't throw it right, you can break your toes or, you know, whatever. You got to, you know, you got to pick your knee up and you got to try to always kick over the elbows. You know, if their elbows are in the way, don't kick straight up into the elbow. You'll dislocate or break your toes. So they're, they're good. You know, it just, you got to do it right or you're going to get taken down or grabbed, you know, or swept. So it's just everything. There's a purpose for everything. You know, everything's not just throw a kick out there and hope it lands. You got to, you got to have like some kind of reasoning behind it. Like John Johnson, he, he throws them like right above the kneecap on the thigh. To me, yeah. it's more to keep a range, like a distance thing. Yeah. Finder, but so what John Jones does is he's always distracting you. He's always like picking at you. You know, he's always messing with with guys. So he's hand fighting. He's jabbing. He's teeping the thigh. He's always hitting them, and then they make a move, and then he exploits it by by um by uh, uh capitalizing on the move that they make. They might make a big move. They might like, for instance, um. Who did he fight? The 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 announcer, two time world champ, good guy. Yeah, for me. yeah, he knocked him out with a head kick, you know, and he was bobbing and moving his head too much. You can't do that when you're you can kick. You know, you can you can do it a little bit, but you can't like bob and weave in MMA. You can get kneed in the face, kicked, and all that stuff. So you, you can do it a little, but you gotta be very careful when you do it. They gotta throw like a big hook or a big overhand, and then you can do it, but uh, I, feel like the, I feel like the lower weights you can get away with it more because they're faster. Uh, nah, the, lo the lower weights are better, so you can't get away with it as much. They, you know, they they're better. The heavyweights you can probably get away with more because they're slower. They get tired, and they throw. They tend to throw big power shots. Where smaller guys are better. They're more skilled, and they're a lot faster. You got to be real careful when you're when you're lighter. The they can react quicker. Yeah, they're they're a lot better. The 25, 35, 45, 55, those are they're all hard, but the, you get up in weight class, they don't, you know, a lot of the big guys they can't get their leg up that high or they're not that fast or whatever, you know, they're more of a boxer wrestler, which is fine, you know, and you just gotta learn how to make that work. You know, so it's something you just gotta be aware of. That makes sense. Man, so do you want to talk about the difference between uh, Dutch Muay Thai and Thailand Muay Thai, uh, what the difference in styles is? Sure. Uh, D Dutch kickboxing, um, they're, they're more of like a power, like, you know, uh, do everything as hard as you can. Just go, go, go. Like uh, they call that uh, Muay Gang. That means like you just go forward and you're just like, ah, I need to eat a lot of shots to give shots. Like uh, Raymond Decker, he was uh, – yeah. The most famous, probably Dutch sure. Muay Thai kickboxer there was. Mm -hmm. uh, he only wore, won four fights in Thailand out of all the fights he had there. Wow. Um, because you could block with his arms and you try to punch him. Well, that's a point. If you block with your arms and they and you punch them, they're scoring points. You know, if you get swept, they can win the round off of that. They, they look a lot at balance and, and knees are huge points, elbows, all that stuff. Uh, he fought Orono. Uh, when Orno was 17, and set Orno's uh, uh, he's, he's African American, I think, in Thai, and uh, he did a big X in his forehead with uh, elbows, and I think Decker is probably in his 20s. So I mean, in, in Thailand, if you're 17, you can fight at the big stadiums in Bangkok. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, you were a you're a black belt under Duke Rufus. Uh, uh, I was his, there from 94 to 2020 with him. So his and brother. I, I, quit, I quit working there. His brother, I don't remember when it was, but he lost a fight due to leg kicks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And kickboxing. So yeah. what do you have to say for like younger fighters? Because block low a lot kicks. Of fights with you say. Block them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing I did. If you have never been fully kicked hard with a low kick, you don't understand what it, how bad those hurt. You got to block low kicks. If if I see guys not blocking, a lot of those guys that eat them in fights, they don't walk for months. Yeah. Your leg stiffens up. You can't bend it. Like, you got to block low kicks. They hurt like hell. They, hurt they don't so score bad. them that much in MMA, but they should because they're very painful, you know. And I always tell guys, he ain't blocking a low kick. Keep doing it. You know, like um, my fighter saw, 
he just won by knockout his last fight. And he actually, he was low kicking the guy so much, it bothered him. He switched stances, walked forward, and he hit him with a hook, and he knocked him out with the hook. But it was the low kick that set it up. Yep, yep. And it forced him to switch. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, man, them calf kicks, them, them thigh kicks, man, they hurt. You know, all it yeah. takes is two or three of them. I mean, sometimes even one before. Yeah. You, you, you know, you can't take so many of them, especially in a fight, you know. It's, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, some guys can take more than others, but I guarantee they ain't walking out of there after the fights, man. Right. They, you know, they're carried, they get, they get carried out or in a wheelchair. You know, it's like, you really want to go through that? Yeah. 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 And you want to stay healthy and get another fight as soon as possible. Yeah. Not, not have to recover for three months. Yeah, for sure. So, do you have any advice for anyone that wants to like get into fighting, like where they should start ground level and their path they should take? Or yeah, I would. Take? Yeah, um, I mean, if you want to be a fighter, I mean, I would start taking classes, you know, and have a have an open mind and listen, you know, do what the instructor says and, and make sure you follow like their directions. You know, don't go in there and be like, oh, I know I watch UFC a lot. But like guys, I've been in a lot of street fights. Street fighting and prize fighting and regulated fighting are two different things, man. They're way different, you know. Uh, you, that doesn't mean you're a good fighter just because you can beat up a couple guys on the street. That that doesn't mean much of anything. When you're in there and they're ready and they both are trained, that's way different, you know. It's not the same thing. For sure. So I mean, find a good gym, train hard as, as much as possible, and. And then if you want to fight, then ask your coach or whoever, when you're ready, they'll let you know, you know. How, how long do you think someone should train before they fight? I know everybody's different, but. I think a year, at least a year. Nice. At least, yeah. I mean, it depends yeah. what you're doing. Are you doing Are you doing mixed martial arts? I think you should train at least a year because you got to learn jujitsu and wrestling and you got to learn more. Uh, if you're doing boxing, you know, boxing, you could fight after a couple months. Uh, if you're doing kickboxing and stuff like that, you could probably fight after like six months or a year. Muay Thai maybe a little longer because there's a lot more to it than than uh, that. Uh, you might want to train a year for Muay Thai. I trained three years before I fought. I didn't. I started Muay Thai in '94 and I didn't fight till '97. So yeah, yeah. then I, I started three years too before I ever fought. Like I did Taekwondo yeah. as well. So yeah, I did that. I competed yeah. in that too a lot. You know. So, but yeah, for like a real fight, yeah, I think you should train for seriously for a while, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. That's cool. So, man, you you've trained a lot of big name fighters. Uh, you want to talk about uh just just some of that training? Maybe maybe uh like who who is your favorite person you've trained? Uh, um, and and why? Um, oh yeah, uh, well, people you know. Um, well, uh, Rafael Stats just won the the um bellator title yeah i trained yeah. him for a long a long time i took him to his that was a good fight his first fight and i remember he was two and all he fought a guy who was nine and one it was in hamden indiana and we're in the like i'm warming him up and stuff and he's like i never threw a kick in a fight and i'm like well you're a southpaw you're a wrestler and i'm like do you care if he catches your leg when you kick and he's like nah I was like, well, then kick. You're either going to hurt him or he's going to start wrestling you. So either way, you win. So, he, you know, I'm pretty sure he's happy now. He just won with a head kick knockout. Yeah. Uh, pretty much. So, I mean, I'm sure he's he's grateful that he, he did that. I still talk to him a little bit. Um, Paul Felder, I'd, I'd hold pads for a lot. He would uh, call me up and ask me to come in and hold pads for him. Uh, John McDessey. He was in the UFC for like a decade. I don't know if he still is. Um, I got uh, Christian Rodriguez here. Um, he rock. He's in the UFC now. He uh, he actually wanted to quit, and I talked him into staying. He was a long time ago before he even turned pro. I'm like, dude, you got a lot of talent. You're going to do well. Don't quit, man. Yeah. And now he's in the UFC, you know. So Jordan Griffin, uh, I got him a contract. Uh, Daniel Wenderley and I trained him and he won on the contender series uh, first round submission. Uh, Feeling good. Trying to think. Um, there's a lot of, uh, man, there's a lot. I, I'd probably train 30 UFC fighters. 
That's, that's Bellator PFL. There's so many that I, I can't. Cool. It's real hard for me to to think of them all. <laughs> hey, I bet. I bet. Yeah. It's just cool. I, I'm just I'm just jealous of your experience and then the you know the career you've had as coaching and fighting. It's it's really inspiring, you know. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't easy. I I actually lost my first three fights. Uh, my first fight, I got my nose broke. Uh, second fight, I got kind of screwed on. Um, the third fight, I got I, I got knee in the head in Canada, <laughs> you know. So I I just never stopped. And then after that, I started winning. And when I got older, I got, I wasn't very disciplined in my twenties. I'd go out and party a lot. I didn't like take it as serious as I should have. Right, right. But back then it was like it was Muay Thai and that was it. You know, this is in the nineties. You know, in early two thousands, MMA wasn't even a thing. Yeah, you know, it was more like UFC. popular. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't what it is today. Today, it's actually MMA. It was back then, it was all the UFC, and it's like Gracie, uh, what's the name? Horace Gracie versus like whoever, you know, and they did tournament. So they'd fight a few times in one night. It was a yeah. lot different. You know, now right. modern day MMA has only been around for maybe 20 years now. So it's very new. So it, it's, I, it's way different now. I couldn't imagine having to fight multiple times. In one night. Yeah. Man. If, if you go to like uh, jujitsu tournaments, they compete in, in in the Gamma Global Mixed Martial Arts Association in Singapore. They they fought a couple of times a day. That's crazy. There was 25 countries there. Um, and uh, I think the United States won two gold medals. The, the girl I trained won a gold medal. A lot of the fighters, though, came from other gyms and they were, you know, so I didn't know them real well, but. I, I worked with a lot of them and stuff in the in the in the, um, the week preparation that we were there. I tried to give them as much advice as I could. Right. It's a little difficult when you don't know someone, though. You know. Yeah, for sure. You got to be more familiar with them. That that makes sense. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm all right. It's all right. I'm at the gym right now. Actually, everybody's just getting here. Oh no. Oh, you good. Man, you here. Hey, hey, what's up? What's up? Yeah. <laughs> thank you thank you awesome that's cool bro yeah so you, you've trained and coached you know legends and champions you've been training for you know fighting for decades so who would you say your favorite fighter is oh i like i like nano he's i actually met him and train and got to take some classes with him uh in singapore and uh he fought it, that one FC is the best show I've ever been to live. They have like pyrotech fireworks come out, DJ. Cool. They give everybody a bracelet that lights up, and when when they're like in the in the fight, it turns like red and blue and stuff. It's real cool, man. Wow. And they have it's little gloves Muay Thai, MMA, kickboxing, all on the same card. It's, it's awesome. If if you ever seen it, you go uh, Nano. It's N. O G N O N G Big O, and he was a big time champ in Thailand. Also, he was a Raj Dumrum, I think, Limpin E champ. Those are the big stadiums in, in Bangkok, and uh, he's now the champ of One FC uh, Muay Thai with the MMA gloves. That stuff's brutal, man. That that's brutal. They when I went to fight in Thailand, they said I was going to fight either on Super Champ or one of those, so it would have been either MMA gloves or big gloves so like it was kind of like when I went out there I didn't know what I was going to do I didn't know who I was going to fight nothing wow I thought I was going to fight a, a tie and then when I got to the stadium for the fight they switched it and I was like oh I'm fighting the guy from Canada I'm like well, fuck I fought I fought in Canada in 98 I was like I wanted to fight it right a I came here to fight a tie guy yeah yeah so I'm, I'm gonna go I mean I've been there three times I'm gonna try to go back every year as long as my body can handle it and I'll do a fight when I go that's awesome that's the awesome. hard part is preparing because it's 100 degrees it's so hot you got to get used to the heat and it's elevated a little bit it's all mountains if you can. so like it's it's up there in elevation also so it's a little it's hard to get used to you know Yep, yep. I tra I trained in Colorado, and when I first moved yeah. here, it was the elevation kind of messes you messes yeah. with you a little bit. So yeah, you definitely got to get used to it for sure. Yeah. So, and you've been chaining uh Gabriel Wanderlei since he was yeah, right there. yeah, yeah. I see him in yeah. the background. I mean, 
he you've been training him probably i don't know since he was like 10 years old probably or something like that maybe yeah something like i think 10 12 yeah yeah well, something yeah and uh he had an amazing amateur career um mm -hmm. now he's going pro i mean yeah you've trained him since the beginning i mean um that's that's pretty cool you want to talk about that experience with gabe and and just with them the whole way that is my favorite thing to take someone you know with not any kind of experience and make them i trained uh one guy elias eli garcia he had no experience at all nothing like he wrestled a little bit in high school i'd hold pads with him every day he got all the way to ufc he knocked a guy out in the first round and Dana White looking for a fight and the UFC signed him. Nice. You know, so that was cool. Like to train someone from nothing to all the way to the biggest stage, that is like the coolest thing to me to see someone get there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And Gabe just fought in LFA too. Uh, yeah. Pretty, yeah. pretty big stage. So. Yeah. Yeah. He's going pro now. So we're, we're, we're working with him with that. So I'm excited yeah. to see what he can do. Does he have a debut position. fight lined up? Uh, we're working on it. You know, we got to talk about it and stuff. That's that's right, more right. of a question for him and his manager and stuff. Yeah, but for sure, you know. So uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully something will come up soon. You know, he train he's training, so he's ready anytime. He's ready, cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about uh, Laura Sanchez. That's that's yeah. cool, man. The GMMA champion. Uh, yeah, nice photo to show of her. I bet yeah. I bet just just going to. Uh, you know, going to Singapore and traveling and just, just going to all these countries, just, just because you, uh, uh, you, you trained all these people. It's, I mean, I just think that's cool being able to yeah. travel everywhere. I don't know exactly what the, the thing to say I'm trying to say, but it's just really cool to be able to travel to different countries. Yeah. It was nice. Uh, what I did in, when I was in Singapore, I would get up early every day and I'd go to evolve mixed martial arts. And you have to be a world champion to work there as a coach. And all the coach, the guy who owns it, he owns one FC also. Uh, it's Chitari Sikatong. And he uh, he hires all the best Muay Thai fighters from Thailand when they retire. Or they don't retire and they fight in one. And they teach all the classes. Wow. So I would go there every day and I'd pay 50 bucks a class uh, just to, like, be able to work with them. There's like two hundred and fifty dollars for a private lesson with them. Holy so cow! I could have did it, but I was like, man, if I do that, I'm gonna be pretty broke. So I didn't get to do that. But uh, I took all the classes, and they worked with me a lot. And you know, there it was really good. You know, and one guy's like, why you keep going there? I'm like, well, I want to get better. You know, and you know, it's kind of like I, I still need to learn, man. They they got a new guy at Phuket Top Team. His name's Satan Munlet. And he was the 115 champ, 115 pounds in Thailand. That is the elite, this division. Okay. And he, he won a uh, two-time Olympic champ, Thailand champ, fighter of the year, uh, uh, Asian boxing champion. He's really good. I want to get out there again and, and work with uh, Satan Munlet. He's, he's got over 371 wins, I think, and like 20 losses. It's on their website. You can look it up. But he's, he's a vicious elbow fighter. And, and clincher, man, he's real good. He's still young too. He's like in his twenties. He's coaching down there full time. Nice. So it, it'll be a nice experience to meet him. I want to get back out there soon if I can. I want to bring up a group too and have them experience. So hopefully, uh, we can all go and as a team and, and, and work. You know, it'd be real awesome. For sure. Man. So. Uh man, I, I I trained at a Muay Thai gym for a few years in in Tennessee. I was an okay. appre apprentice instructor there, which is basically like the lowest of the low instructor. Um, you know, I just no, a start, man. helped a out. Start. Yeah. So you know, I really uh, I'm interested in teaching more too. Um, what sure. advice do you have for me or anybody else who's interested in in coaching people as well as training? The best thing I would say when you teach, teach simple, basic stuff. Like, people don't need to learn, you know, like, start they start doing tornado kicks or, like, this crazy stuff. But be good at simple fundamentals first. After you do that for a while in, in defense, if you don't know that, like, that's, that's bad. You got to learn how to defend and, 
and blocked. That's how those guys have three, four hundred fights. And they're good at defense. Cool. They don't get all beat up. They fight every two weeks. You know, so Kong Napa would fight at a, a, fair, a festival, and he'd knock the guy out, and he'd drive to another one and fight again. You know, and it's just because he was good, that good. You know, because and they don't get paid much. I got they pay me four thousand baht for a fight. It's like one hundred forty dollars. So, I mean, they're not making much money. Wow. So, they fight often. You know, I think in Bangkok, in the big stadiums, they get 30,000 baht, which is like $5,000. It's not a lot of money. Okay. Yeah. So, right, they, they right. fight, you know, very, very often, you know. Almost, uh, out, so almost out of necessity, then, is the reason why they fight so much? Yeah, yeah. They, they, even the little kids that get paid. So, like, they don't fight for free. They don't do it. They look at us like we're nuts to it for fun. Uh, they do it because they have to, but yeah, right. they, they don't have much other choices, you know. And then when they're old, like in their twenties, they retire and they become a coach. And they honestly they make more money. It's so, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> so, man, who who inspires you, man? Um, it doesn't even have to be a, a fighter, you know, or or what inspires you? What what keeps you going, man? What gets you out of bed every day to oh. keep driving, you know? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm happy, man. I'm like a happy person. I, I wake up at like five or six o'clock, no alarm. And I just get up, you know, I'm like, and I got stuff to do and I, I eat. And then I go, you know, I'll go lift weights or something or run. And then I come to the gym and teach everything, you know, teach and train. I mean, I'm here now. It's a hobby. I'm here right. training the fight team. You know, our, we actually added a fight team at 10 a.m. for the guys. So, you know, I'm up early uh, doing it. Um, you know, I, I got a lot of inspiration. A lot of different people in my life helped me and, and inspired me. You know, some people were real negative, and I had to, I moved away from them, thank God, because they were just so negative and, and uh, hard to be around. For sure. I just, I had no choice. I had to go, you know, and it was sad because I was with them a lot of years, but they're just too much. You know, so it's great. You know, my, my it's great, like Michael Jordan, you know, people like that, man, they, I look at quotes from him. He, he was a big hero, especially in the eighties. I seen him dunk from the, the free throw line. You know, I seen that live when I was a little kid, you know, so like I'm a big fan of him still. Um, you know, and uh, he, he was he was a pioneer in his field. You know, I want to be a pioneer. I want to be I want to be remembered for training great people. You know, like me fighting is cool, but I did that for me. You know, I didn't do that for any recognition. You know, nobody really, barely any people are going to hear about that. But I just did that because I want to prove that I can do it. And, and I never fought there before. There's not a lot of people that really fulfill their childhood dreams you know it's always my dream to fight thailand and, and, and you know i'm gonna go back because i want to win <laughs> you know i came yeah. close man i came pretty close but you know next time i'll, I'll have uh the, the problem was i didn't have any coaches i had to have a guy come in and hold pads for me and i had to tell him what to do oh you know shit. like he didn't really know what to do i had to tell him what to do that kind of and, throws you uh, off your game a little bit it was difficult you know but that's all right. You know, you don't have to do nothing crazy. You just got to do simple stuff and, and get in shape, you know, which is good. But it's better when you have a coach. So, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I know my coaches are, are always good for me. My my coach talks to us a lot, even in training. And yeah. uh, when I start doing something wrong or, or slacking a little bit, he's like, come on, get your ass in gear. You got a fight yeah. coming up or, you know, yeah. like, uh, yeah. just extend your leg full back and, and like yeah. you know and and just hearing him say it uh it, it just makes you instinctively do it and and so you gotta yeah. have a good coach that supports you and and know how to help you during the fight right on. you guys want the bell on you want the bell on no but don't worry about it all right all right all right, they want to get it's going. All good. It's all good. Sorry. Yeah. Hopefully, we're not interrupting your. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all. Fine. Cool, cool. You can hear so, me good, though, right? Yeah. Okay. So, have you ever been seriously injured that caused you to take long periods of time off? I tore my MCL. Uh, I tore my MCL. I can't remember when it was. 
and I had to pull out. I was supposed to fight in the fight in Glory when they came to Milwaukee, and I had to pull out because my oh. MCL got torn. That was the only injury I ever had that was like bad, where I had to like pull out of a fight. It took about six months, and it healed pretty good. Wow. But actually, if you get hurt, that's the injury you kind of want. Is it heals itself, MCL, LCL. Okay. Uh, the ACL and PCL don't, but the MCL is like something that will heal. Uh, oh, and then the ACL is like the front and the MCL is the side? Or is it the MCL MCL? is the medial, uh, medial, it starts with a lateral, lateral yeah. Lig yeah. ligament. Yeah. Knee. The LCL is a lateral ligament. So the MCL is on the inside of the knee. Okay. Okay. The ACL is in the inside, in the middle, and then the PCL is in the posterior. So I, I went to school also to be a massage therapist uh, back in 2007. I did that for a while and I, I worked at a chiropractor, but I never made a lot of money. But I got all knowledge, so I still know how to do it and I still know a lot about it. That's cool. Because I would always see, um, I would always see a guy, I got a guy, he's named Phil Anderson. He learned everything in Asia. He grew up in like Japan and Asia. He studied with the personal physician of the Dalai Lama. And he uh, fixed all my injuries, man. Like he, chiropractors and massage therapists are your best friends. They will fix everything wrong with you. Unless it's completely torn, you don't need surgery usually. They'll go to the doctor and they'll tell you you need surgery. Right. But you usually don't. Unless it's really, really bad. It's got to be completely torn, you know. Then you got to have it put back together. I, he, Bill probably knows the technique to fix it anyway. <laughs> he's really good, man. He's he's He did his whole life. He's 65 now, so he's been doing it for 60 years, you know. That's a long so time. I'm actually uh, – so. I'm studying with him right now, and I'm learning how to – what he knows. He's helping me to, to – He's teaching me. I'm going to try to get my license back because I want to help and fix all the guys because they're hurt sometimes. Right. I don't right. want anybody laid off, you know. That's all. Awesome. So I'm learning how to not only fix, you know, not only, you know, there's a quote in Steven Seagal movie. He's like, if you want to be great, learn how to heal people. Hurting people is easy. <laughs> right. You know, so I'm trying to, I want to learn how to fix them too, man, you know. That makes sense. That's cool. Yeah. That's, that's that's really smart too. Um, yeah. For sure. So, so what do you eat on fight day man i'm sorry wait what do you eat on fight day oh uh well you got to be careful what you eat when you so after you make weight you got to be careful what you eat you can't yeah. go out and eat mcdonald's and ice cream and all this crap you should right. eat like something simple I, I would say rice don't eat a lot of heavy pasta you'll get exhausted in the fight you got to remember the fight's like a sprint it's not a marathon it's closer to sprinting than like marathon running. Okay. You got because you're like relaxed, then you explode, then you relax, and you explode. You know everything's explosive, and then you're calm. You know, so I'd say like sweet potatoes, salmon, spinach, stuff like that. Uh, in Thailand, I had like you know pad thai, chicken, you know rice, vegetables, nothing, nothing crazy. And you know most of the time in your fight, you can't really, you're not really that hungry. You're kind of nervous, you know, so. You gotta eat simple stuff. You can't eat nothing crazy. Don't don't go crazy after weighing and go eat all this shitty food. You're gonna feel like crap the next day. Right. Wait till or after like, the fight to really pig out. Yeah. I mean, then you can if you want. You know, I, I don't. I don't eat too crazy after. I stay in shape. You know that that's my thing. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh. So. Uh. How do you deal with nerves? on a fight man on fight day you're probably pretty used to it but now but someone who's less experienced like me fighting in three weeks probably you know yeah. you, you well, got you a lot of nerves you thinking about yeah, it yeah, constantly yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, even I, like i was nervous as hell like up in i was nervous man especially like when i kept thinking about it i try not to think about it too much okay so i was really nervous uh but then when i got to the to the like the stadium to fight at I wasn't that nervous. I was kind of calm. It was weird, man. You know, I went to the temple and they blessed me. And after that, like, I felt real much peace. So everybody's different. You got to find what makes you, what what works for you. You know, like, I can tell you something, but it might not work for you. You know, uh, fighting's mental. You know, all of it's mental. Sure. You know, if you look at the best fighters, they're smart people. They're not stupid. Like, it's high-speed problem solving, you know, while someone's trying to knock you out. 
So like you have to be intelligent. You can't be an idiot. You gotta you gotta think. You know, I mean, as, as an amateur, you're not gonna be able to think that much. You know, your first few fights, probably till about maybe eight, nine, ten fights, then you can kind of think a little more. More, but uh, you know, you gotta figure out what works for you the best. You know, maybe watch a movie you like or you know whatever. Some guys watch Braveheart or something like that or something inspirational and. And then they're ready. You know, it's it's just whatever you got to do, you know. That makes sense. So, you, you know, you're 43. Uh, Houston Alexander just fought a couple weeks ago in bare knuckle fighting. He's 50. What do you think oh, wow. about older fighters that uh, are on the, you know, the good side? They get knocked out a lot and they keep losing. You got to retire, man. You get knocked out a lot, you should just stop because you're going to hurt your brain. You know, uh, I just, I don't know, man, if they need, they probably need money. That's probably why they're doing it. They, they're broke. If they didn't manage their money right, they need money, you know, so they're doing that. That's just how it is. A lot of guys, they just need money, you know. That makes sense. They, they really can't retire just because they need to keep. Yeah. I mean, they, they don't pay that much. You know? I mean, when you get signed to the UFC, you don't start making money until you're on your third contract. You know, your first contract, you're making 16 and 16. That's what, 32,000. And then after taxes, your gym fees, paying your managers, and you're left, you're not left with much, you know. And they, you, you only fight twice a year if you're lucky, you know. So, I mean, you're making 50 grand a year if you're lucky and maybe with sponsors. So, like most of them, people have jobs outside of, of that you know which sucks because then they got to go to work and they got to train you know but it is what it is you got to just sacrifice a little bit you know so with the continuous knockouts like uh cody garber for example you know he's young keeps getting knocked out uh what do you think about the risk of like cte and brain damage caused by fighting well i mean if you're getting knocked out a lot yeah you know, definitely, you know, but I mean, I fought, I probably got over, I got probably around 50 fights, something like that. Um, I, I don't, I don't let people hit me a lot though. Like in sparring, I'm, I'm not taking a lot of shots. I don't hit, I don't get hit clean much. I get hit in the nose and chin. Like I don't, if you see my nose, it's pretty crooked. That's from when I was younger. I got broke a lot, but uh, twice in the ring. And I think, no, once in my first fight, I got broke. I think once in sparring and twice in the street. So, uh, but uh, I mean, after that, like I learned, man, don't let people hit you. <laughs> don't let people do stuff to you. You know, be protective all the time. You got big gloves and headgear on. You know, that's another thing. People don't wear headgear when they spar. It is stupid. Headgear prevents cuts from headbutts and, and elbows and stuff. So, like, you got to be careful when you're sparring. You should wear your headgear, especially if you're sparring hard. You got two guys coming in and they clash heads. I had a guy cut his head open and he was supposed to fight pro his first pro fight in a week. Oh no. And, and I'm like, why weren't you wearing headgear? Like put your headgear on. Like if you watch Pacquiao spar, he wears a bar helmet. I and, hate those things, know, man. I hate but, those damn helmets. But he doesn't want to get hurt. If he gets hurt in the sparring, he loses millions of dollars when he fights. Right. So right. It's like he already knows how to fight. Why would he get hurt or risk it? You know, it's like guys don't want to wear it. You know, boxing's been around for over 100 years. MMA's been around for, like, 20 years. So, like, I'm going to follow what those guys have been doing more than I'm going to follow some new stuff. Yeah. Like, like all yeah. this new technique or this new thing. I mean, this stuff works. It's proven over time. You know, so it's like, why are people trying to reinvent the wheel? It already works, you know? That makes sense. So, I, I just... In Thailand, if they box hard, they wear headgear. You know, they wear headgear. Yeah. They do. Do you think the jaw can, like, heal over time? If somebody takes uh, maybe six months to a year off, their jaw can kind of heal. You know, because your jaw is sore and uh, yes. take the time to properly let it heal. We're, we're yeah, I mean, you got to let it get knocked out. I, I don't know. The knockout cause is caused by, like, a concussion from, like, the brain hitting uh, – the inside of the brain. I'm gonna move to right. the slide, okay? Sorry. Oh, oh, no worries. 
You guys are working, man. Look. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah, so I'm gonna move in here real quick. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, when you get knocked out, it's not your jaw, it's your brain hitting the inside of your skull. So like that, your brain will even heal. You know, I mean, eventually it depends how bad it is, but your brain will heal. Okay. You know, so, but yeah, if you're getting knocked out, you probably shouldn't think of something else to do. Honestly, that's that's my opinion. Excuse me, that's my opinion. Cool, cool. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, what about like performance enhancers and guys that use steroids? Um, do you think they're cheaters? Do you think they shouldn't be doing it? A lot of people say, uh, uh you're not if you're not you're not trying you're not cheating you're not cheating i don't know what a joke daniel you ain't cheating you ain't trying yeah you ain't cheating yeah. you ain't trying um, um but yeah i don't but know you, man that's something i wouldn't i don't like that yeah if you're competing at the highest level especially there you, you shouldn't really be taking anything i mean if one doesn't test from what i've heard one one fc they don't test oh, wow well you they do hydration five. tests don't they what's that they do hydration tests yeah, they do that. But they much they weight, but not drug like, tests. They, yeah, they don't test for steroids or anything. But I knew the the USADA guy. He used to come into the gym and he he drug test everybody. They come to their house at like six a.m. and all that. Right. I mean, so like the UFC ain't playing. You know, they they don't want you on nothing. You know, guys are getting caught. You know, so uh, I I don't think they should be doing it. You know, fighting in the UFC and and I mean just fighting in general. They they shouldn't be really doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like steroids are all fun and games and like baseball when you're not, you shouldn't be hitting someone. Yeah. But and when you're competing against someone else, one, it's an unfair advantage, but yeah. two, you could really hurt someone if you're on PDs and they're not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you still got to be good. I mean, they're not going to make you be a better fighter. Like you're still, you're still going to have to have good technique and, and all that stuff but hey what's up yeah so i mean it, i'm doing an interview right now so <laughs> um yeah i picked the gym i was like i'm gonna come to the gym and do an interview on memorial day it's gonna be quiet but man, no man all right. here, here. but it's all good no worries. Yeah, uh, we got the we got matt's kid in the back yeah we got a fan back here, here so yeah right, gotta, gotta do what you gotta do it's right man bad. you know it's all good it's all yeah. good yeah 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 um yeah, I mean, if you're doing that stuff and, and you're in, like, the UFC and, and Bellator and stuff, that's just – that's not something that I, I agree with. I don't think yeah. you should be doing that. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, you know, less people will stop trying to use it to, to gain advantage. Yeah, because, like, Chael Sonnen says, like Matt pointed out, you can really get hurt, you know, in baseball yeah. and like that. It's cool. Yeah. It's, yeah. Hit the ball further. But uh, you if you cheat in MMA – and you seriously injure somebody, that's a big yeah. difference, you know? Yeah, for so. sure, for sure. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Cool. So towards the beginning of the interview, you made a very good point of some fighters like take off seasons and blow up and you're, you know, you're always in shape, always training, always learning. What are, you, what are your thoughts about like Conor McGregor? Like he's fat, happy, and hungry now, a million dollars. And then yeah. it doesn't seem like he has that drive, but still wants to do it. So what do you think about his, I mean, like, Conor McGregor? Well, he, he has money, but he needs more money. He probably, you know, he's probably spending a lot of money. Because, like, when you yeah. do get, let's say you make $10 million or whatever, you're going to have a different lifestyle. That's an expensive lifestyle. You know, you're wearing Gucci, everything. That shit ain't cheap, <laughs> you know. So like he wants he wants to fly and travel. He's got paid for it. So and his house is probably more expensive. His taxes, whatever, you know. So he probably does need money. So he probably wants to fight, you know. So I mean, it's not like you, you win all that money and then you're good for life. You're not. I mean, look at Tyson. He was he was broke. You know, he spent right. thirty thousand dollars a month on clothes. You know. So I mean, you got to manage your money good or you know whatever. You know. So. These guys, they get a lot of money, but then they spend a lot, you know, because every time you see them, they got, you know, nice stuff on it. Stuff's not free, you know. So a lot of, like, 
a lot of other like MMA, you know, analysts, they always say like Conor McGregor doesn't take it seriously because he has all that money. Do you think even if you have the amount of money, like the drive is still there to compete? Or nah, you- man, he, he take, I don't know what they're talking about. He trains for his fights. It's just guys are, they don't stop training and they're getting better. I mean, he fought Poirier and he, he knocked him off the first time and then Poirier got better, you know, and he trained yeah. harder. It is what it is, you know. I, yeah, I think he won. So did they fight three times? I yeah, yeah, they fought a third yeah. time and he broke his leg. He broke his leg, yeah, yeah. And that's another thing that calf kick everybody's fascinated with. That's the easiest way to break your leg. You're kicking at the calf, which is – if you kick the upper calf right below the knee, that's like the hardest part of the body. That's what you block with when you check the kick. So if you blast that really hard, you're going to break your leg. It's really stupid. Mm. Unless there are foot's turning inward a little bit, it's not a good idea to do it. I don't understand why guys are so obsessed with breaking their left – some guys break their legs. Uh, you know, in person, I've seen it two times. And, uh, you know, you can kick really low, like, uh, around the ankle and stuff and sweep on landing. But if you kick, like, right below the knee, like, right right where, not the, not the knee itself, but, like, below it, the shin part, I'm still in my shin. So, like, okay. you kick this area right here, this is what you block with when you kick. When you check kicks, so that's a bad idea to kick that area. You shouldn't kick that area, really. Uh, it's easy to break your leg. Your legs turn inward, and they're staying like karate stance or boxing stance. Then you can kick it a little bit more because you'll actually hit the muscle or the feet. But the nerve, the nerves that will shut your leg down are above the knee. There's a nerve above the knee. If you hit that nerve five, six times, a couple of times, or even once, good. It won't be a lot, man. You know, so I'm not a big fan of calf kicks. I think they're stupid. But if people want to throw them, throw them. You know, like like I said, MMA is a new sport. So people are just figuring out stuff still. They, they still don't understand everything. You know, a lot and a lot of coaches don't understand because either they they never fought that much or they did karate or taekwondo and now money. That's where the money is now. MMA. So, like, they might have been a, a karate teacher or a taekwondo teacher when they were younger, or they did it, and then now they're like, well, we're going to train MMA or, or boxing or whatever, because it takes a long time to become a good pro boxer. You can be a good pro MMA fighter a lot quicker. You can make money a lot quicker. Francis Ngannou wanted to be a boxer, and they told him, no, do MMA. And now, look, he's, he's rich, you know, and he's hey. famous. So, I mean, it would took, he probably wouldn't have did that well in boxing, honestly. Starting as an adult, it's it's very difficult, you know. That makes sense. What do you think about um like dirty fighters, man? People who grab the cage, grab your gloves, uh, eye poke you, uh, groin kick. There are people who kind of play the game a little bit because they yeah. know they can get away with it before the point gets taken. Yeah, I don't like that. If you're if you're doing stuff like that, you know, and I, I'll tell my guy right now, like, I mean, if he does that to you again, do it back to him. You know, like, you know, let's not play that shit. Like, don't do that, man. I mean, you know, I mean, you're fighting, so a fight's a fight. You know, you're not. We're not in there playing MMA. We're not. You know, you play basketball, you play football, you play baseball, but yeah. you fight when you go in the cage. It's way different. You know, it's not the same thing. You don't, you don't play fighting. No, you can't. You can't. You know. I like that mentality for sure. I actually seen a video this morning of uh, Dynasty Combat Sports. It's a local promotion in Nebraska. Yeah. And they had Terrence Crawford's son do a wrestling match with another ten-year-old wrestler, and they do it with. uh, They have two wrestling matches each card, Mm. but. The kids were grabbing the cage, and the ref was like, "You cannot grab the cage." Yeah. And even though they were doing just grappling and wrestling, it's still yeah. good to instill that mindset of can't can't grab the cage, can't open hand, you know, range find. Yeah. Well, you gotta be careful with eye pokes. I mean, that's the biggest thing I'm I'm concerned about. And that, most of those are unintentional. I mean, people don't really poke each other in the eye intentionally, hopefully. 
But that that's something that you just really usually don't do. You know, poking someone in the eye, I mean, that's just not cool, man. I mean, maybe I might do that in the street if I, a lot of guys try to jump me. I might fucking finger jab them. Anything goes. Them or something. But, I mean, yeah, but like in a, in a, in a fight like in, that's regulated, you don't poke people in the eyes, man. That's not cool. Nice, nice. That makes There's really no way to get around that. Like with the gloves, like they're fingerless gloves, you got to grapple. Yeah, especially, you know, when you yeah. post off of somebody. You, you know, yeah, yeah. Up. I mean, I'm lucky at Muay Thai, most of these boxing gloves, you know, so like you don't really have to worry about that as much. Now they're starting to do more. The MMA gloves in Muay Thai is real popular now. John Wayne Parr started that. He yeah. was the one who started that. And um, now they're doing it in one and, and Muay Hardcore in Thailand. They got that. And it's getting really popular. Uh, I thought I was going to have to do it. I was like, okay. I've been, so I, I sparred with the MMA gloves on a little bit. And, and I was like, I just got to get ready for it, man. Like, that's a problem when you go to Thailand. If you're, if you're a tourist, they call them like tourist fights. You might fight someone really good and you might not. You might fight someone really bad. A lot of guys go over there and they fight a cab driver or um, they call them like the, the tuk tuk fights. Uh, the tuk tuk drivers, they drive those little cabs and they go in there, they get paid, you know, 4,000, 5,000 baht and they, they they go in there and try, but then they get hit hard and they go down. And, you know, I'd rather fight a hard fight with a real opponent and lose than fight one of those fights, right, honestly. For sure. that's, my, that's just my thing. I don't want to go there and just get green and then think I'm the, the, the man, you know. That makes sense. Yeah, I like that mentality. I'd rather fight a, a real fighter too. Myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, somebody close to my age, though. So <laughs> yeah, nice next yeah. Time. Man, people, people that are younger definitely don't understand. You know, once you sit, get, to, get older, you know, you just slow down naturally. You can't. The speed walk. isn't there as much, you know. That, you know, right. and, that, and that's another thing. Like you see, like uh, Sanchai Lertilla and. They fight the 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 other guys. They they're not even really fighting them. They're playing with them. They're not trying that hard. Yeah. You know, they just throw a strike and it, you know it's the right one and they knock them out. You know. So if you watch their younger days when they fought, that's why they don't fight in Bangkok. They stop fighting there once they hit. Most of the guys stop fighting there when they're mid twenties, thirty, because they just can't keep up. You know, with the 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds, it's hard. Yeah, they're they're a little bit faster, man, and they're good. You know, it's not only that they're faster; they're good. You know, so if a guy's a little faster and they're they're good, it's it's difficult. You know, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, the cardio is a real real worry. It's something you know of concern to mine. Like the guy I'm fighting is 23. You know, so yeah, I'm, I'm 38 next month. Yeah, so my. Okay. Dude, is he going to be super, super in his prime and super cardio? But, but I've been training yeah. for that. So, you know, I mean, I'll think, well, man, if you can, if you can, out, I don't know how many fights you got, but if you can out think them, that'd be the best thing, you know, use your, use your mind. Yeah. Uh, use your brain. The brain is the, the, the biggest tool you got, man. If you can use your brain and you can outthink the guy, that that's good. But you can't, at the, at the same time, you can't overthink. You got to just go, you know. Sure. So that's just how it is. So speaking of you know, out thinking, uh, someone that has a great fight IQ, all the talent in the world inside the cage, all the problems outside of the world, outside of the cage. What are your thoughts on John Jones having so much talent but un yeah. unable to stay out of trouble? It's sad, man. It really is the saddest thing. Um, I don't know. Maybe he needs some counseling or, you know, he needs to go to like, yeah. I don't know, what is that, 12-step meetings or whatever, yeah. man. He needs something because it's sad to see that happen to him. You know, it's it's a sad thing that he's a sick guy, man. He needs help, you know, yeah. uh, mentally. Sure. You know, he's there, man. In the fight, he's great. You know, he's good, but he's got, I don't know, maybe he's a guy that, didn't come from a lot and you know these guys get money and they didn't have it before they don't know how to act you know they do whatever they want plus like you're in vegas if you're in vegas or you ever been there 
it's it's rough to live there and it's all parties party, party city yeah i can't imagine living there yeah yeah i mean even thailand was like that i could have went out every night i went to the Bangalore road it's like where all the bars and strip clubs and shit are I, as soon as i got there 10 people came up to me and they're like you want weed you want cocaine you want weed? oh you wow weed? yeah you're like you can try it before you buy it and i'm like Dude, I'm <laughs> friday i'm like i'm good I'm friday. and they're like oh no you come back after your fight we're right here i'm like all right man damn yeah, yeah wow. i mean i was like 10 minutes i had to leave i'm like this is too much yeah that's crazy yeah but I mean, it's it's how it is, though. You know, you gotta be disciplined. Yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not an angel or nothing. I I, I went out and did shit too, but you know, I mean, there's something wrong with anybody who gets in the cage and right, right. right. We're all a little off. For yeah, sure. there's a little something wrong with you if you're doing it. <laughs> but Yo, you, know, you, know. you gotta learn to control yourself outside of it because. I see guys who are not even famous and they act like Conor McGregor or Jones. <laughs> it's like, dude, you're you're like three and one as a pro or three and one or two and one as an amateur. And you're yeah. acting like, like, what are you gonna do when you are famous? You know, you yeah, yeah. Move it all yeah. Away, you know? Well, they, they see them do it and they're like, oh, it's the mindset. If I yeah. imagine myself being the best, I am the best. Right. They think that's how they're gonna get there, but it's yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, no, not not at all, man. I mean, I think he got famous by that, but he could also back it up because he did win a yeah. lot of fights. You know, he, yeah. he, I didn't think he was gonna beat Aldo when he beat Aldo. Man. I was like, Whoa. dude, I lost money on that. I lost a hundred bucks. I bet on Aldo, and I didn't think it would happen. But he did. He did that drop step cross, man. He came charging in, and he yeah. found it in. He knew exactly what to do. I think I think the reason why he did that is because he he mind fucked Eldo. He played oh, yeah, he played sure. so many mind games yeah, and he already yeah, had him beat before the fight yeah. started. And that's why he, that happened. He knew he'd come at him hard and then he did that that um Muhammad Ali did that. He knocked out Sonny Liston with that the anchor punch. Yeah. It's like a drop step cross. It's good. I I knocked a dude down with that punch uh in 2010. I fought uh at State Fair in the, the Cream Puff building. Uh, actually, Rose, uh, Rose, my, um, not my yep, she yep. fought on that show in Pancration. Nice. And Sergio did also. They did Pancration on that show. They were like 15. I was like 30, <laughs> 31, I think, something like that. Yeah, you trained you trained Rose too, didn't you? She trained at uh Rubis Yeah, I went, I went to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love yeah. Rose. Uh, I'm a big yeah, fan of Rose. Oh, man. So. I like her, man. I like yeah. Pat Berry, Chico. Yeah, uh, I just seen Chico not too long ago at um, like Home, like Home Depot. Mm-hmm. I was walking by. He yeah. see me. He's like, "Hey, man, what's up?" Hey. Um, that's cool. So it's cool. I was like, "Come by," and you know, he was here for a little bit. I, he's probably visiting family. His family stays here, so right. I don't know where they are in uh, Minnesota or Colorado or something. I'm not. I'm not sure what, what city. Yeah. They're, you know. Seems like a lot of fighters are trying to come out to Colorado uh, and fight or train, do fight camps, or you know, yeah. like big big bear used to be like a real popular like yeah. the mountains yeah. and train. Now it seems like Colorado is becoming more yeah. popular for training. Terrence yeah. Crawford does all his training in Colorado Springs. Elevation you know, okay. team. Uh, yeah, yeah, and there's a lot of good yeah. fighters coming from there too. Yeah, I mean, it, it, all that stuff helps. You know, the, the, the biggest thing you gotta have the right coaches. You have the you have to have the right training partners and coaches. Yeah. If you don't have really good training partners and really good coaches, you you're not gonna go that far. You have to have the right coach. You have to have the right training partners. That's important. Very important. And you need a coach that's not gonna yell at you and make you feel like an idiot when you do something wrong. There's a way of correcting someone in a way of embarrassing them and making them feel like crap. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you gotta correct the guy and be like, "Hey, this is how you should do it. Don't, you know, do this. You know, you're, you know, don't talk to him like they're an idiot and make him feel bad. You know, that's. I had a problem with a coach that he was like that. He was, he was nuts, and he always, he'd always say he's something different one day, something different the next, and he's just kind of crazy. So it made you second guess yourself. Yeah, right. You know, instead of helping you, you know. 
So mm-hmm. you need the right people with you. That's that's a big thing. That that I'll, good I'll atmosphere. Where you are. Yeah, where you want to come into the gym every day. If your coach yeah. is all, always yelling at you or always making yeah. fun of you or whatever, yeah, makes you yeah. not want to go. So, yeah, you're, you're but, nervous to yeah. come in and walk in the door. Like I don't know what they're gonna are they gonna be right. bad. Today? He's gonna embarrass like, me again today. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but that's how some some are, you know. But well, all their fighters leave. That's probably why you're you're yeah. not very nice to people, and you know, or you screw them over. That's that's how it is. You know, they're gonna leave eventually. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, gyms like that. Yeah, the fighters will leave, and and they won't last. And but yeah. but they're so uh, you know, especially now, MMA has become so much more popular. There's so many gyms popping up. Uh, you know, yeah. Every, Mick Dojo's or whatever. Everybody wants to have a gym. And there's yeah, of- there's a lot of those, man. I mean, there's a lot of MMA gyms, and they're MMA gyms. They're like they don't they don't teach Muay Thai or kickboxing or jujitsu. Like they don't wear gis ever. They never put right. the gi on. Every look at Charles Alvera. He's a black belt jujitsu. I mean, you don't get a black belt in jujitsu but not wearing a gi. No. You gotta put the gi no. on. You don't learn the fine details of everything if you don't do like Muay Thai or, or, or Jiu Jitsu, you got to learn that stuff. You Individualized know? training. Yeah. That's what one thing I learned from the ties. So ties, what they do is they'll do, they'll box on Wednesdays. They'll put the headgear on and only box. Yeah. Then they'll only clinch for like 20, 30 minutes or maybe sometimes even an hour. Uh, then, then they'll do like kick sparring where they just do kicks and they wear no shin guards, and they just kick back and forth. Yeah, I've yep. done it with them. You know, I, I trained at Yokao in Bangkok uh, with where Sanchai is. Mm-hmm. And uh, unfortunately, the day I got to the gym, Sanchai left to fight in Italy. Oh, bummer. But what happened was me and my friend were there, and all the coaches were there. So it was just me and my friend. And the coaches, so I picked their brain about everything, man. All the little stuff. I did private lessons with them. And I was like, why does he do this? Why does he move that way? And they just, they answered them for me. And I, I didn't understand some things. And they kind of cleared it up for me because they, they spoke English pretty good. And uh, the one, all of them had over 300 fights. They all did. They were all from uh, Jockey Gym. That's where Sanchai, Lurzilla, some of Cam Singh, all the really good ties come from that gym. They produced Slita Patai. They produced a lot, a lot of really good fighters. Uh, the guy from uh, the Ultimate Fighter, Jean Claude Skarbowski, that GSP put brought in that was drunk. That oh yeah, yeah, the out. trainer, yeah. That's that guy went to Jockey Gym. That's where he learned all that stuff, and he's real good, man. He has a Jockey Gym, and I think he reopened a, a gym, Skar, uh, Skarbowski and Jockey Gym in Bangkok, and he has one in France. Uh, France and France is really good at Muay Thai. Oh, yeah, really? France, France is really good. Yeah, yeah, they have a lot of they have some Liberty champions. Uh, that, uh Rafi, Rafi Badik, uh, Yusuf Bowman. I think they're all from uh, they're from uh, France. They're really good. Cool. Yeah, I know France is a uh, MMA was illegal there for the longest. Yeah, and, yeah. And when I was it's in, legal, uh, it's really blowing up. Oh yeah, when I was in Singapore, the the MMA team from France it said Kempo on their jackets. Mm-hmm. It didn't say MMA. It said right. Kempo. Like, yeah, they, they all did. Um, they did MMA instead. It was. I think it's illegal, but now it's not. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's so. That's crazy. I mean, MMA is still illegal and just now being legalized in some areas. Yeah. So that's yeah. how new the sport is. Yeah, they used to have yeah, speakeasies a- for yeah. MMA. Yeah, right. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Man. So uh my heart goes out to him. The Cain Cain Velasquez <laughs> situation, man. What do you think about that? I mean, he did probably what any any other dad, any other you know person would have done, you know. Can you, can, you tell me exactly what, can you tell me exactly what happened? Yeah, yeah. It seems, you know, a lot of a lot of people are talking about it. It's all over okay. MMA news. So we like to touch on topics okay. that are uh, yeah, currently yeah, yeah. being trending. Um, so what happened is um, uh, I, one of his nieces or nephews um, was allegedly uh, uh, sexually misconducted versus somebody. Okay. Um, this guy got out of jail. 
the 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 guy's father bonded him out. Um, okay. Cain Velasquez chased them and got in a high speed pursuit with um, his father and and the alleged guy in the car, and he shot at them and ended up shooting the guy's father and uh, okay. now in jail for attempted murder charges. Oh shit. Um, yeah. And That's denied terrible. bail twice. Yeah, and That's so he's, he's denied he's denied bail um because he's a flight risk and danger to society. But yeah. uh, the guy who's had like a hundred sexual misconduct charges out, is yeah. out on yeah, out on bail. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean my my personal opinion, if you molest a kid, you should get castrated. On it, on, on it. I mean, be thrown in jail forever. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, I, I'm right with Kane, man. That guy, I don't like that. But with you, man, it sucks, man. It sucks, man. I don't. I think that it really is horrible. Uh, for sure. I, I don't know how I'd react. I have a six. I have a 23 year old daughter. Yeah. I got a 19 year old, and I got a six year old. Oh wow. And if someone touched him, I yeah, I'd lose my mind. I don't know. Yeah. I can't really say. It's hard. I, I would man. hope. I don't know, man. I'd, I'd hope that the, the Justice Department would do the right thing, but it doesn't seem like they do. It, it just seems you know? like, yeah, yeah. The justice just, it seems like people like that get off with a slap on the wrist for some reason. Yeah. What the fuck? I think they're using yeah. Kane as a, an example of like, let the law handle it. You know? yeah. And it doesn't help that California's recent to MMA, so they still, you know, some people still see it as human cockfighting, and he's the, yeah. what, from what I've heard, he's one of the nicest guys, you know. I met him, I met him before. Nice. Yeah, I, I mean, he, he looks like, a, he's, he looks like a damn caveman, too, though, like, he's like, he's mean looking, he and mean. Cool, dude. but yeah, he's, he'll talk to you, he's nice dude, man. Almost everybody that's good, I know, or what from what I've met, all the best fighters that are really good, they're really nice. They're nice people. They're really nice people. They they want her to fly, but you get in the cage with them, they they might you know they'll they'll try to get you, rip your head off. Um, yeah. So, but they're nice people on the street, you know, and in, in everyday life. That's and then the guys that aren't good, they're total they're total douches. You know, like they're just not nice dudes. It's funny. weird. The guys that aren't that good, they're just weird, man. Um, but the other guys, they're so nice, man. It's, it's crazy. I don't understand it, but whatever. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. What so you- I was going to say um, with, you know, training, coaching, fighting, do you have like a favorite movie that you like to watch, like Wind Down? Oh, uh, I like Gone Back. I don't know if you've ever seen that with Tony Jack. Ang Bak, it's from uh, Thailand. Oh yeah, Ang Bak, yeah, Thai like, warrior. Yeah, I like that movie. Uh, protect those movies are pretty good. Uh, I like his, his. He's a really, really good um stunt man. He does all his own stunts, everything. Those are those are cool. Like I, I watched The Prayer Before Dawn when I was in Thailand because my my Disney Plus and my HBO didn't work. I had the apps on my phone. What? And my net my Netflix worked though, but it was all Thai movies. That. and like some American and there so I like it had all these Tony Jaa movies on it so I, and then I watched The Prayer Before Dawn which is a true story it's about a, a guy from England he gets caught selling Yaba which is methamphetamine Movie's in Thailand fire. and he got he got caught and he went to prison but he was already he did boxing Muay Thai uh, before and then he did it in prison and he he fought so good they put him on the team and he got to fight other people in other prisons. Yeah. And then he, he you know, all this. But you gotta see the movie. It's called A Prayer Before Dawn. It's really I love good. That movie. I love if you it. haven't seen yeah. it, Matt, I think I I think I mentioned that movie to you once before a while ago. Uh I can't remember. It might have been a different movie, but yeah. I, I, I that movie was awesome. I was just yeah. about to ask you about uh, about the movie about the guy from Thailand who went to jail. And I think yeah. That's what yeah. you're talking about. Well, the the coach in the prison is Sumluck Kam Singh. He's the guy who won the gold medal the year Mayweather fought. He beat the guy that beat Floyd Mayweather in boxing. He's wow. he won the Olympic gold medal that year. And he was a he was so good at Muay Thai he couldn't get a title shot. He's the guy that Sanchai and Lordzilla like mimicked. He, so Sanchai is like his protege. Nice. And then Lordzilla actually fights a lot like 
some look a lot like some look. if you watch his fights and you watch Lerzilla's fights, they look real close. They're all from Jockey Gym too. So that that's a real good gym that it closed down for some reason. Um, but yeah, you know, a, a lot of the gyms there come and go, unfortunately. But yeah, he was from that gym as well, and he's really good. He was in a lot of movies and stuff. Cigarette man, all the the coaches over there they, they used to fight. They all smoke and drink and so it's funny. Nice, nice. Uh, couple more questions. We've gone kind of gone sure. a little, little long, but uh, well, yeah, that's fine. Kind of uh, bare knuckle MMA is getting so popular. What do you think about bare knuckle MMA? They they pay well. A lot of boxing. people are are uh yeah. What did I say? You said MMA, bare knuckle boxing. Bare bare knuckle bare fights. Knuckle yeah, bare knuckle boxing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's becoming more popular. Um. Would yeah. you would you put your fighters in a bare knuckle fight? Um, if the money's right, I mean, and they want to do it, you know. But uh, well, my guy from Phuket Top Team, uh, Steve Banks, Panda Banks, he fought bare knuckle Thailand and he won. Uh, and I guess he said he's supposed to fight another guy. I can't really say it right now because it's. But he, he might fight a guy that we all know. Nice. So um, nice. It's, I mean, yeah, they pay you, you know. And you want to do it, go for it. I mean. It's just, it's easy to get knocked out. Right. <laughs> you know, sure. Real easy to get knocked out. And big, small. There's no corners. It's a circle. Yeah. And they, they want you to fight. You can't, like, play around. Like, Paul, Ma, Paul Malinazzi fought bare knuckle, and he just kind of up, tried to outpoint the guy and move, and he lost because he didn't fight. The other guy yeah. came forward and pushed the pace and tried to fight. And he just danced around him and he lost. So they make you fight. If you don't fight, you don't win. You know, they probably won't ask you back. That makes so, sense. Yeah, it's, they want to see blood. <laughs> so right, like, you're probably, right. if you're going to that, you better be prepared for that. They're going to try to kill you. And they're going to come hard and fast. It's two minute rounds. It's yeah. two minute rounds. So there's, I think it's three two minute rounds. Or, I don't know. I'd have to look. But I know they're two minute rounds. And. Uh, Steve Banks, he got knocked out twice in the first round. He came back in the second round. He knocked the guy out. So he's a tough guy, man. I like that. That guy's yeah. cool. So, you know, shout out to him. But he's, he's a nice dude. You got to be tough to do bare knuckle fights. He's tough as hell. He's the nicest guy you'll ever meet, man. He's probably about 6'8. He's a big guy, man. Yeah. But he's a super cool. heavyweight. Yeah. I mean, if you want to do it, go for it. If they pay, don't do it if they don't pay you right, though. That's all I got to say. Right, right. That makes sense. Man, what do you want to be remembered for when it's all said and done? When um, somebody says Joe Nichols, what do you want them to think? Man, I want them to remember me as, you know, a positive, motivated person, you know, someone that really helped people. I want to help people achieve their dreams. You know, I don't want a problem with their dreams or I don't want to, like, have a lot of fighters, and, you know, they get signed or something, and no, no, don't don't sign him. We want this guy in, and this guy's been with me for like uh, almost ten years. You know, I, I don't want to be that guy. I want to be be the guy that people actually like. You know, and people remember, and they want they want to be like, man, that's that was Coach Joe, man. I love that guy, man. You know, I want to be that guy. I don't even care if if I if I ever get famous, I could care less. You know. I might be, I might not, you know, but whatever. I'm just here. I'm trying to do the best I can. If I can be a better person tomorrow than I was today, that's what I want to do. So I just try to be 1% better every day, man. That's all I can, that's all I can really say. That's great to hear. Uh, not, even, not only yeah. like fight with students, too, man. I, I, I'd rather have a lot of students, too, that, that get healthy. You know, I want people to be healthy and happy in their life. You know, live a good, long, healthy, happy life, man. And, yeah. and you don't have to be like, you know, damn near crippled at 50 and, and right. not healthy. You know, people are living longer and, and better lives nowadays. You know, it's way better. So Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're definitely so do you have any, leaving your mark. Oh, all right. I was going to say, do you have any like uh, sponsors or anyone that has really helped you pave your path that you want to shout out or anything? Uh, Daniel Wanderlei, man, he really helped me, taking me on to uh, to bring me in here to coach. I didn't want to do it. I, I quit 
at the other gym I was at because I just I couldn't do it no more. They overworked me, underpaid me. They're always calling me, yelling at me on the phone when I was at home. It was just too much. And uh, I was I was I actually quit that job to work at Olive Garden. I was a waiter. Wow. I quit working there and I got a job at the Olive Garden and I was paying to train there. And uh, I didn't want to do it again. So he had to talk me into it a little bit. I was like, no, I don't want to do it. They're like asking me, and I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to do it. And uh, I, I was grateful that he brought me in, and he's been so nice. Yeah. And helping me with everything. He, he's the nicest guy I've ever met, man. He's real good, man. He is super nice. Uh, I'm he's thankful for him. Too. Yeah, he's, yeah, he is one of the best instructors I've, I've had. Yeah. He has so much, uh, so much detail when he coaches. That's one thing I noticed. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, couple, the couple times I trained with him at Rufus Sport, uh, he just so much yeah. detail into everything he talked about. It, it was just kind of blew my mind at that time. I was like, wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got our gym now. It's on 107th in Burleigh. It's uh, 10704 West Burleigh, Milwaukee or Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. And man, anybody can come up here and train. We don't. We got kids. Uh, we got adults. I mean, we got guys in their 60s. I mean, everybody's well. You know, we're, we've been here since 2020 now, and uh, we're doing a lot better. I mean, way better. You know, a lot of the UFC and Bellator guys have came to us. You know, they got yeah. they got sick of being treated like crap and, and used and stuff, and they came right. over here. You know, and, um, you know, unfortunately, that's how the fight game is. Once a fighter... Uh, loses a little bit or they get a little older, they move on to the next guy, the younger guy, and they, they forget about the guys that helped them build their their gym up to that level that they're at, man. You know, it's really sad, but that's how it is. You know, it's it's pretty bad. Um, I don't ever want anybody to feel like that. You know, I don't want to use people and, and treat them terrible. It's, it's, it's just sick, you know, but whatever. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely think you guys, you guys got a great atmosphere at your gym, and there's a reason why uh, you know, Wanderlei made his own gym and, and broke off, and and I, yeah. I I think you guys are gonna do big things. I really do. Like you're producing, uh, you know, Gabe and all so many other high level athletes. Yeah. So if you're in the Wisconsin, well, what what Tosa area, uh, you yeah. know, training with these guys is definitely where you need to be for sure. Well, so. you know, when guys were winning when we were training them, and then we left and they started losing a lot. So what does that tell you? I've noticed too. Yeah, I, I, I've been there. It is what it and is. So that that says it all, right there, man. The the, yeah. the proof is in the pudding, man. Yeah. So the, these guys are the people to train with in Wisconsin, man. This this episode ran a little long. We hope yeah. you watched the whole thing, man. Yeah. We really appreciate it, Joe, dude. This was an amazing time. We had so yeah. much so much great things to talk about. Uh, we hope hope the people got to know you better uh it's great like yeah. into your mind and hearing your Thai knowledge and and experience just because you have so much of it and yeah. you're so high level uh i mean you're you're pretty much at the highest level in mma so it's awesome to talk with someone like you uh we appreciate you taking time out especially on a holiday to do this uh, yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah we're extremely grateful uh we're yeah. honored to have you on the show yeah it's fun anytime man if you want to call me back ever i would definitely like to come back that's cool sweet, sweet. Um, yeah we'd love to get you on another show we'd love to get you on a fight breakdown show too i mean that would be yeah, awesome. Sure. Oh, yeah. awesome we'd love to have yeah. you next time so i got my zoom working good now so yeah yeah it's a little yeah. challenge for a minute we'll, but we'll yeah definitely. definitely reach out all right thank you yep. hey, we'll see you around thank you so much y'all have a great day yep thanks for all the service all veterans out there you know, don't forget about that, man. My grandpa's buried. Uh, he was in the in the army and stuff. So I'm gonna go see him later and put a flag nice. at his grave. Nice. So you know, always always gotta do that. So yep. thanks a lot, guys. For sure. God bless. Yep. Thank you.